David, you're going to suffer the most horrible pain for the next six months. Every breath you take is going to be horrible. I gained 100 pounds of fluid. Like, you're just going to be in constant agony. Did you ever come to acceptance? But there was one point where I was ready to give up where I started slowing down my breathing and uh, my family was around me. My sister Gina was holding my hand. Everyone was you know, saying goodbye. I just had my last rites read to me and um, it hurt so bad to take every breath. And it was just like I was fighting. And then I started to slow down and I was gonna, I was gonna let go. And I heard my sister Gina and I can picture it, I can hear it. And she said, just breathe Dave, just breathe. that I was like, all right, I can do this. I can do, I can do another breath. I had to have this vision for what I was fighting for. So that was the first thing. The second is that I had this like amazing support group around me, my dad, my sisters, Caitlin, like they were literally holding my hand, like giving me strength. I, I could feel their strength from the way they were holding my hands, from their voices, like that, that gave me strength. President Trump created the Make America Healthy Again Commission. Ivermectin, yep. you know, with COVID. I mean, a lot of people, Joe Rogan. But what they didn't highlight yeah. is that I got better. Yeah, you got better quickly. They try to make it seem as if, like, I'm doing some wacky shit that's completely ineffective. For some, it means thinking outside the box. And so how, how many other of these drugs are there? Pharmaceutical companies have stopped producing many life-saving generic drugs because they make too little profit. There are a lot of drugs that can be used in multiple ways. You know, Viagra is a, is a funny one because not only, as you mentioned, did it go from heart disease to erectile dysfunction, but it actually is also used for this rare pediatric lung disease called pulmonary arterial hypertension. Kids were dying because they weren't getting enough blood flow to their lungs. Desperate parents are looking for treatments. The little blue pill that millions of men credit with saving their sex lives is now saving the lives of children with congenital heart disease. But two months ago, she started taking a drug called Adzerka, which is exactly the same thing as Cialis. A random doctor thought to themselves, huh, if this can increase blood flow for these you know, older men, could it maybe increase blood flow to the lungs of these little kids? Thalidomide, it caused all these horrible birth defects back in like the 50s. That drug can treat leprosy and also this blood cancer called myeloma. There's never been an entity, whether it's in the government or within industry, that's just been focused on saying, okay, among the 4,000 drugs that are approved, that are available, what are all the other diseases they can treat? How many drugs have you personally found that treat? We've advanced 14 drugs for re 14 for diseases they weren't intended for. Doctors spend their lives healing other people. But what happens when physicians become patients? Who do they trust with their own health and their own lives? And what if the only doctor who can save you is you? What if we could utilize artificial intelligence to scan across every drug and every disease? What if we could actually scale what we're doing for these few, but to all? came home from a deployment when I was contracting for CIA and I had a neighbor, her name was Wendy. Beautiful woman, beautiful person. Two twin boys that were graduating, getting ready to graduate high school. She came over and told me that she had brain cancer and I was like, I didn't know what to think. Went on a deployment again, came home two or three months later. And I remember, you know, watching her, she gained a, a, a tremendous amount of weight, lost all her hair. And it got, it, it got so bad that you could go talk to her and you knew that she could under, I, it looked like she could understand what I was saying, but she, she, she couldn't formulate the words and get them out to me. And you could just see like tears building up in her eyes because it makes me. The amount of suffering that Wendy, your mom, yeah. people with brain cancer endure, I mean, it, and to hold on, to have the courage and the and the drive and the will to hold on, to know that her kids are going to be okay, yeah. you know, with her gone, makes makes me choke up right now. But I mean, it's man, I just don't wish that on anybody. It's the worst, and I mean, and that same feeling of like not wishing on anyone. I mean, for me, it just 
there was just this something that just clicked in me and just snapped, which was like, I'm gonna dedicate my life to getting revenge against these things. One thing you were asking me about my mom earlier, and you asked about um, the last conversation that I had with her, she actually left a message for me even after she was gone. I actually would, would love to read this to your, to your audience if yeah, it's okay. Please. It says, Pope John Paul said it best in his address to the youth in Camagüey. Dear young people, whether you are believers or not, accept the call to be virtuous. This means being strong within, having a big heart, being rich in the highest sentiments, bold in the truth, courageous in freedom, constant in responsibility, generous in love, invincible in hope. <laughs> <laughs>